In its first matchup at these games, the United States team, led by co-captain Joe Delagre, star Chuck Aoki, and coach James Gumbert. Good choices. Way to push us off. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Took on New Zealand and dominated. It has been all United States. Outscoring the Kiwis in all four periods to win 63 to 35. Chuck Aoki and the Americans taking care of business on day one. It was the first step in a long road to redemption after a devastating loss to Australia in the Paralympic gold medal game five years ago. The line and it's over. They will win the gold medal. Australia. The game, of course, was, was epic, you know, it's double overtime. So it was certainly disappointing to come away and lose. We were really frustrated, really disappointed. You know, our goal was to win gold medals, always is. It's now has served as a launching pad for us to hopefully be on top of the podium in Tokyo. We still consider ourselves the best in the world. And, you know, this is the standard that we're going to have to play to. If we're going to expect to win, it's more than just a game or a sport at that moment. You know, it's it defines you. It's there for us, gentlemen. So the goal is nothing short of a gold medal. And the team's leaders know it will require absolute unity to get there. It's like this a long journey to get to the top, and so we want to win gold. But the last four or five years, we've really made this program into a program that loves each other and cares about each other in ways um, that goes beyond rugby. It's a very transparent, very open, very vulnerable culture. We also want to support each other. We want to grow together. The pandemic kept them apart for months until they could finally regroup this past January, eager to resume the quest for gold together. Going through what we've been through and the highs and lows, I think we're the hungriest team out there that we want this gold medal. 1.9 seconds. That's the difference between winning and losing right there, kids. Good job. And we're ready to go from Tokyo. U.S. and Canada. Second game in pool play out of Group B. Angle, Jeff, angles! Here's Zach Medell. Nicknamed the kid, and for good reason. He's only 27, but at his third Paralympics, and the top star for Canada with his first goal of the match. And for the United States, Corey Pewterbaugh at the controls, going long to Chuck Aoki and the face of U.S. wheelchair rugby, and one of the faces of the sport across the line. Team USA and Canada traded points early, led by their top scorers, Chuck Aoki and Zach Medell. As the players who have the most functional mobility, Aoki and Medell act as their team's respective quarterbacks. If you're looking at the low pointers, the low pointers are your offensive linemen. If your mid pointers, let's say they're your receivers and your running backs, but you know, the high pointers run the show. Wheelchair rugby is high scoring and back and forth. The winner is often the team that forces mistakes and avoids turnovers. Three on one, but Dell upending pewter ball and a steal for Canada. Zach hit him, took advantage of it, and they got the turnover. That was real smart by Zach. The first turnover of these Paralympic games okay. for the U.S. comes late in the first quarter of their second game. Riddell going long. Wheeler the steal, Aoki is in with one second to go. Are you kidding me? Even if it was close on the scoreboard, the Americans would be plagued by sloppy play as the first half continued. You see where momentum can swing in wheelchair rugby. U.S. has to take advantage of it, and they don't. Turnover to turnover. Wheeler, looking back, gets Katero miscommunication on the inbounds, and there is the U.S. turnover early in the second. Another turnover. Time game at 25. Over the back. Medell finding Whitehead and cruising in for the Canada goal. That was a great pass by Zach. Hitting Whitehead in stride. Bob now up. they need to score this. U.S. a late goal in the first quarter. Just sloppy, sloppy play by the U.S. Very, very sloppy. So at the break, the Canadians, who are down by three in the first quarter, lead the U.S. by one in pool play. 
U.S. led by one after one, but the Canadians a 28-27 lead as we gear up for the third quarter. The last time the U.S. trailed at halftime in any match, it was the gold medal final in 2016 in Rio, which they ultimately dropped to Australia. What are you looking for, especially these early minutes from the Americans? They just need to take care of the ball and just slow down a little bit. This time, the Americans were determined to find a way to move back in front. Daoki finding Wheeler, tied up, and Josh Wheeler with eight goals now, along with his steal. The effort was led by a strong second half from veteran Josh Wheeler. Wheeler, another steal. The United States needs to capitalize on this turnover. Wheeler cruising in for the points, and the U.S. does indeed strike off the turnover. U.S. by two. Miguel looking for Whitehead. Wheeler denying the entry, but Whitehead, big target, able to back in for the goal. In the closing seconds of the third, a highlight real play gave the U.S. some fresh momentum. Delagray held up for a moment by Hirschfield. Josh Wheeler met by Medell, faked the long pass. Three seconds. Aoki. He caught that. Backing in. Yes. Are you kidding me? Chuck Aoki. Holy cow. It was just amazing. It was almost over his head. It's like he jumped out of his chair and scores the goal. You know, the tale of two halves. On cue, Chuck Aoki in for another point. By them! Delagrave, the co-captain. One more for good measure. And this should just about do it. Chuck Aoki, a 30-goal effort in game two for the U.S. A hey, way to go through the valley and climb back up on top. One game, 32 minutes for Paralympic gold. It's been a long wait for the United States. 13 years since their last gold medal in Beijing, and now in pursuit of the ultimate prize. The stage is set in Tokyo. It may have been their fifth game in five days, but Chuck Aoki in the United States had been waiting for this game for five years. Great Britain started strong, forcing turnovers and jumping out to an early lead. All paced by top scorer, Jim Roberts, who had seven first quarter tries. With just over three minutes gone by in the gold medal game. Turnover. Steal for Phipps, thrown away by Josh Wheeler and Great Britain off two United States turnovers. So good. Scoring both times, it's a two goal lead. After trailing by as many as four tries, the U.S. began battling back in the second quarter. A oh, dangerous inbounds. Josh Wheeler looking to turn it up court. Delagrave, plenty of driving room. And Joe Delagrave is in for the goal. With a run of scoring by Aoki, bringing the Americans to within two at halftime. Long ball. Oh! Aoki, he's there again! He did it! It was the same deficit the Americans had overcome two days earlier against the British in pool play. This time, though, the reward for a comeback would be gold. Down at the half of the gold medal wheelchair rugby game, U.S. head coach James Gumbert tried to keep his team composed and focused. Anybody that goes into the key, you push them, you hold them, get them out of the key, okay? All right, let's go. But all eyes were undeniably on Chuck Aoki, the team star, and its longtime soul. Aoki is now 30 years old, Tokyo his third Paralympic Games. But earlier this year, his trip to Japan was in doubt. 
we had our first training camp that we'd been back for in 10 months, you know, and it was exciting. Everybody was pumped to be back. After only about three days, I started feeling real sick. I woke up in the middle of the night and I was vomiting. I was chilled. I was, felt horrible. And it was like, okay. So I went to the hospital here in Birmingham and I was ended up being here for about four weeks. We didn't know if we were going to have him for Tokyo. Some of the guys kind of looking at me going like, hey, what are we going to do? And I don't know what we're going to do. Aoki has a rare genetic disease and an infection in his right knee required multiple rounds of surgery. You can't replace a Chuck Aoki. Pound for pound, in his class, he is the best athlete in the world. Season two, Chuck Aoki, the star for the U.S., sprints to the line, and he's and in one scores. Two. Chuck Aoki coming off the 34 goals yesterday against Canada. Aoki made it to training camp five months after his infection healed but it would be a struggle to get back into game shape. You ready, Ruth? You are. Set, go. I'm gonna go through some, some physical testing just to kind of see where I'm at physically coming off the injury. So we do some just pure sprint, like just pure speed, see how fast you can go. And so the second test is more of an endurance, like where are you at? How long can you keep up your endurance? How long can you keep moving? All the way through, all the way through. Four months ago, I didn't know if I'd be out here even being able to do testing. So it's to even be out here moving around like that is great, and it feels good to feel tired again. It's been a while. Uh, they're called citrus armbands. I rolled over to him and I said, "You okay?" And he goes, I, "I didn't think I was going to get it back." And I said, "Welcome home. This is not what I wanted, but it's what I got, and I'm grateful that we got a Chuck Aoki. We got the chance to be the best team in the world with him." After spending most of the first half behind Great Britain, Chuck Aoki and Team USA closed the gap quickly in the third quarter. Della Grave, Aoki, tied up at 29. The U.S. chipping away, down by four early. And we've got a brand new gold medal contest. We got ourselves a ball game. Oh, that was a great hit by Josh Wheeler. He's got to get on his horse, though. Chad Cohn. Oh, he got it! That was a great catch. That's a low pointer running the fire drill, extending and scoring for the U.S. As the fourth quarter began, it finally looked like the U.S. had found their rhythm. Oh, he's on him. That's Robinson. a turnover. That is a turnover for the United States. That is brilliant. And it's on. One hit, and then Joe comes, and then all three of them hit him. He's like a pinball. That's exactly what they needed. But Great Britain's Stuart Robinson kept finding ways to stall the Americans' momentum, eventually totaling 12 tries in the second half. We've been here many times. Look it in the eyes. Don't be afraid. Run to the fight. Run to the fight. All right? One, two, three. USA! As the clock ticked down, the U.S. was still trailing, and every time they made a bid for the lead, Great Britain seemed to have an answer. Chad Cohn collects, looking for a high pointer. Aoki came to get it, poked it away, a steal for Great Britain. Great Britain's defensive pressure just wouldn't let up, and on offense, they didn't have a single turnover in the fourth quarter. You just can feel that sense it's starting to really slip away. Calling one pointer. And to your point, Chuck Aoki came back, and there's just not a lot of energy left for someone who's given so much. Final moments in Tokyo. Back to back servers for the US. It's gold for Great Britain. The wait for gold continues for the Americans. You know, we've been through so much together with the pandemic, with the last five years. A lot of guys have battled really serious injuries that would have knocked a lot of guys out and said, you know, I'm done, and they fought through it to, to get to this point. You know, it's not the outcome we wanted, but I love these guys. I'm so proud of them. I'm so proud to be on this team, and I'm so proud to represent my country.